Today's students will be doing part 3 from lesson 5 from general science textbook for standard 6. Substances in the surroundings, their states and properties. For a complete lesson, do watch part 1, 2, 3 and 4. You'll get the link in the description box below. This video was made just for you. Do remember to like, share and subscribe. Now here, reflect on these questions. Can you tell? How will you identify the following? A glass. A glass means this tumbler over here. Is it made of plastic, steel or glass? What material is it made of? This tumbler over here, hmm? which we also call glass. So, is it made of plastic, steel or glass? The rods, okay, are they made of iron or aluminium? Think about it, okay. Just look at it. Think what it could be, iron or aluminium. The door, is it wooden or glass? The door over here, is it made of wood or is it made of glass? The white powder, the heap of white powder that you see, is it salt or chalk powder? I'm sure you were able to identify all this very, very easily. How were you able to answer them? So, to answer the above questions, you consider their properties, isn't it? You looked at it, you saw it, you felt it. So, for example, you must have seen the transparency, hardness, weight, color, the sound produced from it. You must have even tapped, you know, to a glass, if you, the tumbler that was there, you must have tapped it to find whether it is made of glass or plastic. Solubility. Solubility means whether it can dissolve in water or no. Okay, we know that salt will dissolve, but chalk powder will not dissolve, isn't it? So, solubility in water, etc. Now, substances can be identified by studying their properties. By just looking at their properties or studying about them, we can identify and we can find a lot about it, about each and every substance. And they can be put to use according to their properties. So, by studying their properties, realizing what is, what are the properties, what is their characteristics, so we can make use of it. So, like for example, so many things we saw, isn't it? The wood that we see, we are used to make furniture. Glass is used for so many things, iron, aluminium. So, we use this because of their properties, we make use of it in a particular way. Now, let's study the properties of the substances in greater detail. Now, let's learn about the various properties of substances. Now, for that, let's do this little experiments or little activities to find out the properties of substances. First, what will happen if pressure is applied on a substance like chalk, brick, alum, glass, or a Rajgira Vadi. What is a Rajgira? You get this chikki. You know, Rajgira is a, 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 a grain-like substance, okay, of which chikki or Vadi are made. So, what will happen if you break this? Okay, you apply pressure. It's going to break, isn't it? So, these substances break into small pieces of particles, just like what you see in this first picture over here. It can easily break. Such substances are said to be brittle. So, anything that you can, if you apply pressure and you can break it easily. So, these are called br brittle. So, this substance is, this property of a substance is called brittleness. So, we learned the first property that is, some properties can be brittle. Now, let's take and do this uh, second activity. Take an iron nail and try to pierce a cardboard, cardboard sheet, wet mud and a piece of wood using the nail. Okay, so here try to put push the nail to a cardboard or wet mud or a piece of wood. What happens? Think about it. What will happen? The nail easily pierces, isn't it? Will go inside the wet mud because the wet mud is very soft. But not the piece of wood. It can pierce the cardboard sheet with some effort. So we see with where the mud is concerned, wet mud is concerned, it will go very easily. On the cardboard, little effort has to be put. But wood, maybe difficult. You'll have to hammer it, isn't it? Now, why does this happen? Think. So, this is called the hardness. How hard or how soft a substance is. So, the hardness of a substance is determined by how much resistance it offers 
to the substance being pushed through it. So, whatever we are trying to push through it, okay, so that will decide, that will determine how much, how hard the substance is. So, which is the hardest known substance? Do you know, know it? Okay, you can check the answer on our website at www.jkacademypro.com. Now, let's do this little activity to learn the next property. Stretch a rubber band and let it go or apply pressure on a piece of sponge and release it. Okay, sponge, you all have, you all know the sponge. Okay, so you all must have done this, you know, many times in the, in the class or whenever you have a rubber band, we tend to do that. We all, all of us have this, you know, to stretch the rubber band and release it. So, what do you see? What do you think? The rubber band and the sponge go back to the original shape, isn't it? So, if you stretch it, it will become longer or bigger. And when you release it, it will come back to its original shape. So, some substances change their shape when a force is applied on them. But return to their original shape and size when the force is removed. This property is called the elasticity. So, this property of being able to stretch and then going back to its original size is called elasticity. Now, let's do this little activity. Take a flat metal sheet of the size of a notebook. You can see, follow the picture given alongside. Now, holding it at an angle. So, just tilt it and just lean it against a wall or something. Now, put a drop of water honey, gum at different places on the board. Okay. So, water, honey and gum or glue. Observe how they flow down the slope. Isn't it? Once you pour water, it will slope. This will also slope. This will also slope. So, liquids flow downwards on a sloping surface. This property is called fluidity. Okay, so the fluidity of any substance is determined by how easily it flows. So, this is more fluid. This is a little less. Okay, and this is the least fluid. Okay, because it will take a long time to flow down because of its thickness. So, this is the next property we learnt is fluidity. Now, let's go to the next one. If two blocks of the same size, one wooden, and the other iron. Now, take anything of the same size. That is one piece take of wooden and the other of iron. Now, if these two are weighed in a balance, okay, that is weighing balance, how will they compare? What do you think? What will happen? On one scale, on one side of the scale, you have kept the wooden block. On the other, iron block. So, think. Now, the mass of the different substances having the same vol volume can be different. Now, their volume was the same. Volume means the size was the same, isn't it? We took the same size block, but they weighed differently. That is, the mass was different. So, this difference is because of the difference in their densities. So, how dense it is, how what kind of material it is. So, the molecules, how tightly or how loose they are. So, th that is the density of a substance. So, between substances of the same volume, the ones with greater density are heavier than those of the lesser density. So, we find that wood will be lighter than iron because wood is less dense than iron. So, that is how we don't have to see the size or the volume of a substance to determine its weight. But how dense it is, that is what is going to determine its weight. Now, let's do this little activity. Now, take a glass of water, add some salt, fine sand and sugar in it and try to dissolve them. Look at the picture here. Take a glass of water. Okay, you can take little water, half a glass of water. Try to dissolve salt, sugar and sand. Okay, and observe it. Now, repeat this same thing by replacing water with kerosene. Now, take a little kerosene. Now, if you don't do it this at home. Okay, so you could get it in the laboratory. So, take little kerosene and try to dissolve salt, sugar as well as sand. So, what will you observe? Some solid substances dissolve in a particular liquid. If a solid does not dissolve in a liquid, it is said to be insoluble in that, in that liquid. Now, for example, salt is soluble in water but insoluble in kerosene. Okay. 
you know of many beverages made by using water and soluble substances isn't it we make so many cold drinks and hot drinks also tea coffee so we make so many drinks by made by using you know you uh, water and soluble substances so they get dissolved now the properties of a substance of getting dissolved is called solubility so if it can dissolve hmm, while making tea we add sugar we add uh, even we add tea powder but does tea powder dissolve no sugar dissolves isn't it in the same way we make our cold drinks okay so there are many things that dissolve in it but certain things will not dissolve so that is called the solubility if it dissolves it is called the solubility now when we can look through a substance and see things on the other side then that substance is said to be transparent isn't it so glass glass plastic we can see through it so this property of substance is called transparency so that is called this transparent substance is transparent and the property is called transparency glass some types of plastic clean water and air are transparent substances so all these are are transparent substances so these were the properties of a substance to check your answers to all the textual questions and for the summary meanings other question answers and for free worksheets visit our website at www.jkacademypro.com you'll get the link in the description box below do remember to like share and subscribe this is end of part 3 for a complete lesson do watch part 1 2 3 and 4 you'll get the link in the description box below